Hey guys, our topic today is MIMO or multiple input, multiple output. Now, first of all, let's focus on the pronunciation of this, right? So you can either call it MIMO or you can also call it MIMO. MIMO or MIMO is uh, an antenna technology that is used by the 4G LTE networks as well as the 5G NR networks. So what MIMO does is that it allows 4G LTE networks to offer better signal quality as well as better bandwidth or bit rates. So historically, when you think about antenna technologies, uh, looking at things like diversity, etc., people always think about signal quality as being something that antennas focus on. But what MIMO does, what MIMO brings to the table, is that it also allows a mobile operator to offer higher bit rates to the customers in addition to better signal quality. The two parts to the MIMO technology, you have multiple input and then you have multiple output. Multiple input is all about transmitting the signal from one antenna to the other, and multiple output is all about receiving the signal from one station or antenna to the other. So what happens in MIMO is that you have multiple antennas that transmit the signal, and then you have multiple antennas that receive the signal. In order to define how MIMO technology would work in a certain network, you have something called configuration of the MIMO technology. So configuration could be, for example, two by two, which means there are two antennas that are transmitting, and then there are two antennas that are receiving. In addition to that, there's another dimension, which is downlink and uplink. Downlink is a communication link from the base station to your mobile phone, and uplink is a communication link from your phone to the base station. So the MIMO configuration can be defined in both uplink and downlink. For example, in 4G LTE networks, you have a MIMO configuration of 4x4 for downlink and 2x2 for uplink. So what it means for downlink is that there are four antennas or antenna elements that are transmitting the signal, and then there are four antennas at the mobile phone station that are receiving the signal. And the 2x2 in uplink means that there are two antennas or antenna elements in your phone that are sending the signal back to the base station, and then at the base station, there are two antennas or antenna elements that are receiving the signal. The later versions of LTE, including LTE Advanced and LTE Advanced Pro, use a higher MIMO configuration, which is 8x8 for downlink and 4x4 for uplink. Let's have a look at this table that summarizes what I just talked about. Now let's have a look at the building blocks of MIMO technology, which are spatial multiplexing, spatial diversity, and beamforming. The main reason why 4G LTE networks use MIMO technology is because of spatial multiplexing. Spatial multiplexing is also called space division multiplexing, and it is basically a kind of multiplexing where you have antennas, multiple antennas, separated physically in space, and then they can transmit bits and pieces of the overall payload of data from the transmitter to the receiver. The most important thing to note here is that in spatial multiplexing, all of these spatially separated antennas transmit different parts of the overall data. So they're not sending copies of data uh, in multiple streams, but they're sending different portions of the overall data as separate data streams. So what we are basically saying here is that by doing this, mobile network can create virtual individual channels through which different data streams of the overall data are sent. The second building block is spatial diversity, and diversity is not a new concept in mobile telecoms. It has existed for many, many years in mobile telecoms. Spatial diversity can be applied to the transmitter or the receiver or both. If we take the example of spatial diversity for the mobile base station's receiver, let's say, so a receiver diversity, that basically means that you can have multiple antennas at the base station receiver that can pick up the signal coming from your mobile phone all from different directions. In RF communication, you have something called multipath fading, and that is what diversity is for. Multipath fading is something that occurs when a signal is traveling from one location, one antenna, to the other. So what basically happens is that when the signal is traveling from the base station, for example, to your mobile phone, it has lots of obstacles in the way. For example, buildings, trees, other radio waves, etc. Multipath fading is just a natural process 
that occurs when the signal is traveling from one antenna to the other. For example, let's assume a base station that you can see in this picture here. So when the signal travels from this base station to your mobile phone, it may encounter many obstacles in the way. For example, tall buildings, trees, other radio waves, glass windows, refraction, reflection, etc., etc. And all of these things have a negative impact on the strength of the signal. So what happens with the signal is that as it travels from one antenna to the other, it may split, it may shatter, it may break down into multiple signals, bits and pieces of the signal, and all of these bits and pieces travel using different routes, different paths, hence the word multipath, and they take all of these different paths, and then as they move forward, they get weaker, they fade, hence the word multipath fading. So as they fade, as they get weaker, they all reach towards the antennas of the mobile phone. Once they arrive at the mobile phone, the mobile phone has to use its antennas to be able to combine all of these bits and pieces of the signal, put them as one whole signal, and then continue with the RF propagation process. So the value diversity has is that it has multiple antennas, and when all of these bits and pieces of the signal are coming towards the phone, it can use these multiple antennas to improve or increase the chances of receiving the signal. Now the key difference between spatial multiplexing and spatial diversity is that in diversity you have different copies of the same signal to arrive from the transmitter to the receiver. And finally, the third building block of MIMO technology is beamforming. Beamforming can provide targeted uh, reception and it can target a specific UE or specific receiver and point all the signals coming from different antennas towards one specific receiver. The advantage of beamforming is extended coverage and higher bit rates. Thanks for watching the video guys. I've written a very detailed post on this topic. Have a look at the link in the description below.